what's going on? Welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft. We are the seventh of eight players. We are not the seventh. We, we were in like fifth, fourth. There was just seven in there. Now we're, now we're, now we're Gucci. Fourth Earlingus and Hull Breacher. I think those are both pretty good. <clears throat> I think fourth Earlingus just wins games. And, uh... I think I'm going to take it. I mean, Hullbreacher wins games too, but this card wins. This is a one-card combo. This is a two-card combo. So, you know, when you're when you're tasked with taking a one-card versus a two-card combo, you take the one-card combo. It is 24-7 Lingus in this house. Oh, Lord. Give me strength. Give me the strength to, to Lingus. I like Through the Breach. We could easily Through the Breach with a fourth-year Lingus. Hmm. Got a bone shards. <clears throat> as far as red cards go, not a ton. Talisman is nice because it is both of these colors. <gasps> I think Through the Breach is a little more powerful, though. It lets us pick up, like, Archons and things. Oh, a treachery, eh? And a pest infestation. Both powerful gentlemen. <sighs> so we can be Jeskai, we can be Naya... We could just splash the pest infestation, which I think is pretty good. Yeah, I kind of like that. Staff of the Storyteller is also pretty good. I think pest infestation is probably one of the strongest cards in this pack. I previously would have said treachery, but I do think pest might be better than treachery, which is super weird. <clears throat> um, Coalition Relic's not bad. It's a little slow. Godless Shrine seems fine. Presuming that, like... Maybe we're also reanimating something. I kind of want a relic with, with this. Yeah, I'm just going to take the relic with these these color requirements. That just feels correct. <clears throat> Creeping Tar Pit is interesting. Dark Ritual is interesting, even though we're not black. Triplets is pretty good with Breach, but I bet you Triplets comes back. I do like Touch the Spirit Realm. Also, you can blink the creature you put into play with through the breach, which is kind of cool. I don't think we want to be black here. I don't think we're blue or black currently, so I think we're just taking touch of the spirit realm here. Like, if you end of turn through the breach, and then you attack with the guy, and then you can blink it so that it stays around forever if you need to. I mean, I'm no expert, but that seems pretty good. A tal oh, Archon of Cruelty? Yeah, okay. That's exactly what we were hoping for, especially with Through the Breach. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, I would not mind Bitter Triumph or Woodfall Primus here either, but without being those colors, yeah, Archon is MVP. Like, outside of the OG3 Eldrazi, like, Archon is easily one of the best Through the Breach targets, along with, like, Atraxa. And the nice thing about Coalition Relic is that it literally lets you play double black card. Oh yeah, f uh, through the breaching a Gruff's triplets, then blinking the Gruff's triplets. <laughs> That's so many triplets. The reason, I mean, Coalition Relic is a little bit slow. Like, it's... I think we take Leyline here and just hope for some good lands in the next pack. I don't think we're taking double black card. Fire Ice is decent, but again, like, I'd rather not be blue if I don't have to be. Inti also very good, but I think Leyline Binding is pretty great. I agree. Relic is fantastic fixing. It's also good ramp because it ramps you from three to six, which is pretty nuts. Um, very similar to like Worn Power Stone. Oh, wow. Savai Trium is actually perfect. Uh, it's both red and white, and it gets us the black if we ever want to cast red cards. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <clears throat>
What up, Pug? What up, Colossal? Like, getting a Tri-Land that's both of the colors of 4th Eurolingus, pretty good. <clears throat> oh, Blood Crypt came back? Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't think I would take anything else in this pack. Maybe Horizon Canopy, but having a searchable duel is much better. Also, a land that contributes to Leyline Binding. Plus, it does make us easier to play, like, Mardu and just splash, like, green for Pest Infestation. Talisman of Conviction actually seems fine. And Dotha Trium actually seems fine as well. Interesting. I almost kind of like Talisman over Trium because being able to ramp to like some of the more expensive stuff and like to ramp to fourth year Lingus just feels better. <clears throat> Blooming Marsh. None of these cards are super exciting. I'll take the Marsh just in case, but I don't see us playing it. And then Restless Vents is probably fine. Thurman Inspector is also not bad. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just take Thurman Inspector here. I definitely feel like I don't need another Black Red Land, especially when it comes into play tapped, if we are planning on prioritizing things like Triomes. Creeping Tar Pit came back. Uh, I think we're just taking Portable Hole here, which is I think is playable. Containment Priest. Sure, all right. Man, white is extremely open. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> that's fascinating. In case we get... Uh, well, we're definitely taking Polluted Delta here. Uh, I don't think this pack is very good otherwise. I think if Troll comes back, uh, that's like the only thing I'd really even want here. Um, Delta gets us both our lands right now, though, which is pretty good. Okay. Mox Opal. We are not a Mox Opal deck. Fable seems fantastic here, though. That's basically power. Nothing else really exciting. I don't think Showdown's terrible. It's a little costly. And if you can't take advantage of the plus one, plus one counters, I don't think it's as good. Um, Silent Clearing would be fine if it comes back. But yeah, that's an easy fable. Oh, Scrubland? Wow. That's pretty good. Do we want Flash? I don't think so. Like, I don't think we want to just go into blue here. Torsten could be good. Torsten is kind of like a blue, uh, green, white... Atraxa a little bit. I think the Scrubland's kind of more important. Nothing like breaching out of the Raven Inspector. I agree. That's where you want to be. Hmm. It's either Torsten or Scrubland. Torsten is nice because we do have Through the Breach. I'm going to take Torsten and hope Scrubland comes back. <clears throat> I think it's more important to have cards that actually fulfill our end game at this point. Gideon is fine. Retrofitter Foundry is, is cute. I do like Stoneforge, but I'm kind of frustrated that they took out Cauldra Complete. Because I do think it was one of the absolute best targets, and it always came around like no one would take it. Um, I think Stoneforge is fine. I think Retrofitter Foundry is great, but I don't think this is much of a Retrofitter Foundry deck. I mean, if we get Batterskull, that's totally fine. 
I'm okay with that. <clears throat> I do like Shattered Sanctum here. I don't think it's Worm Coil. I don't think it's Mystic Forge. I think it's just Shattered Sanctum. Again, like I try to want to, I'm kind of want to minimize these because I do think we're going to pick up another Triumph at some point. Genesis Engine. There's Sword of the Meek. <laughs> That's interesting because we did pass Thopter Foundry in pack one. So someone could easily pick this up. I do love, absolutely love Genesis Engine. I think it might be Reprieve though. Yeah, I'm going to take Reprieve here. We have no blue fixing at this point and I don't think I want to go into it let's say a fifth color for it. <laughs> oh, it feels bad though. Uh, skull clamp. Do you do anything? Stoneforge can get you. Torsten makes a bunch of tokens. Pest infestation makes tokens. Yeah, I'm going to take skull clamp. And if we get like lingering souls, it's going to be pretty good. Plus we have Stoneforge. Oh, fatal push is nice. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think we're just taking fatal push. Very solid removal. Uh, okay, so what was the card we wanted? It did not come back. Silent Clearing, I think. We can just take Esper Sentinel here. I think that's fine. Magda is also not terrible. It does ramp us. Could take Copperline Gorge as well. I think Magda is actually decent. Showdown came back. Tropical Island. <clears throat> Which we can get with Delta, but it doesn't really do much outside of... Yeah, I'm going to say... The only other fetch that was in that pack was Misty Rainforest, which wasn't really interesting to us. Oh, the Scrubland comes back! I think we're taking that over Judgment here. I think the mana is just too good. Um. Yeah, I mean, Selfless Spirit's the only... Reasonable pick there. Yeah, I'll take Bivouac. All right, so we just basically got all the good Mardu lands, I guess. All right, Remand can go. Hexmage can go for now, but if we hit Dark Depths, I'm definitely taking it. Honestly, we, like our mana base is looking... This is a pretty decent. I think everything here so far is playable. Thank you. Orzo, thank you for the gifted subs, buddy. Really appreciate it. Okay, so no power. That is Thank unfortunate. You. There is an Entomb, which is very strong, but we have no reanimate cards yet. That is unfortunate. Sacred Foundry is good. Vindicate's good. I, it might just be Entomb anyway. Like, putting either one of these guys into the graveyard and then being able to, like, reanimate them is nice. But you gotta have to have, to have things to reanimate with. I'm tempted to not take this because I don't think it's where we are. Seething Song is not bad. If Seething Song comes back, like, turn three through the Breach. It's pretty aces. Sacred Foundry, not terrible for this deck, I think. Vindicate's just a solid removal spell. And we did pass Council's Judgment. Uh, I don't think we're dynamoing. I think our color restrictions are a little high. Yeah, I don't think Robber's terrible. I think we're just playing more of a control deck here, though. I'm going to take Vindicate, and I'm going to hope Seething Song, Sacred Foundry, come, or one of those two come back. <sighs> Proving Ground is nice. That's a Swamp Mountain and a Forest. Um, that's pretty good, actually. I like Apparition as well, but I think we want to take the land here. This is 20 playables so far. And we can cast both of these. And Dural is nice, and I do like having a third card, uh, a second a second target for Stoneforge. And this is also a way to make 1-1s one for the Skull Clamp. I do like Path. I do like Snuff Out. I'm going to take the Enduril, though, because I'd rather have it for our deck. I think we're taking Ashen Rider here. <clears throat> Again, it's another card we can cast. We can also take Fire Covenant, actually. Fire Covenant's really good. Ugh. Oh, let's, let's put the Proving Ground over here. Fire Covenant just seems really good for this deck as a one-sided Wrath. At instant speed. Yeah, we can't pass a Fire Covenant. Uh, the Ashen Rider might even come back. Bloodstained Mire. Holy crap, that's really nice. Well, definitely taking a Bloodstained Mire. If Ending comes back, or Chandra. Yeah, Chandra or Ending would be great. Plateau. All right. 
or Gristlebrand. Well, we didn't take Ashen Rider, but now we could take Gristlebrand. Like, what are our ways? Like, the only the only way we thing we have is through the breach, though. This is this deck is fairly interesting. So this is 22 plus 13. This is 35. This is the sixth pick. We get two more packs. I think I think the I think the plateau is just better for us. I hate to say it, but I I think it is. It's just concealed courtyard here. Like this is twenty-two playables. Discard a card would be great, but we again, like we have no way to really reanimate anything. We're not reanimating things here. I think we're just taking concealed courtyard. Thank you. I don't hate a timeless dragon. Also, molten collapse not terrible. Shua Garner, thank you for the resub, my dude. Welcome back. Star Creature Planeswalker. What do we have right now? We have Touch, Vindicate, Fire Covenant, Reprieve, Portable Hole, Fatal Push, Leyline Binding. Yeah, we're just taking Timeless Dragon. I kind of like having an extra guy. Seething Song came back. Huh. Is Coveted Jewel any... I can't Coveted Jewel. That's so... It's so dangerous. Do we just Seething Song and hope to hit? Seething Song on Archon too, if you have like three mana and if you have five mana, two of it's black. Like I think Seething Song into Archon is really decent. Apparition came back. Okay, now we're gonna have to make some cuts here. I think we're cutting Showdown. I like Damnation as well. I don't think we're double blacking except for this Archon and our mana base is pretty good. I'm gonna take the Apparition here, I think. Path came back. Easy, easiest path I've ever taken. Um, <laughs> huh. Okay, we'll just take Ophiomancer. Oh, Zagoth's Triumph came back. Probably just play that as a black source and a green source. Yeah, all right. Wow. Okay, so now we need three cuts. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so we have Stoneforge. Our three drop slot's looking fat. Ophiomancer is actually pretty good with Skull Clamp. Take out Selfless Spirit. I don't think that does much. I think we have to keep Path. I think everything th this, this to the right is good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like almost all of our lands are playable. I'm not going to play Stomping Ground. Maybe I am. I'm not going to play Blooming Marsh, though. I might play Stomping Ground just because it is a searchable uh, red source that adds green for our two green cards. Wow. Oh, boy. I might take, yeah, let's cut Portable Hole. I, I'm thinking of dropping Relic, actually. It's... I think that's totally fair, especially because it costs three and our three drop slot is pretty fat. Yeah, this seems good. This seems like a good 23. Sort by mana value. No, sort by color. That's what we meant to do. Um, yeah, okay. So this is red, this is white, this is green. These three can go here. Okay, so let's see what we got here. We'll go over here. 12, 12 lands, so we actually have to add five basics. White sources, we have, nope, nope. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight white sources, this is 10 white sources. That seems good. I do not think we want a green source. Black, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't think we need a, a swamp. I think I'd rather have another planes. Red, we have one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think like this is like 11, 9, 8 or something ridiculous. That seems really good. And we get another, yeah, of course we get one more. Um, red sources, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's really, it's good. Nineteen lands. This is sixteen lands. Uh, white sources. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven white sources. We just go to twelve. I mean, white is our most represented color. We could also just get a green. What are, what are our green sources actually? Great question. I assume Pluto Delta and Bloodstain Mire both get green sources. Yes, they do. Okay, so one. Two, three, four, five green sources for two green cards. One of which costs seven. Actually, seems fine. I'd rather not. I'd rather not draw green at any point in the game, to be honest. I think the two, the two triomes, and like especially because we have double white, double white. Like, yeah, I'd rather. I'd literally rather just put in other planes because I think white is very, very important. This is nine, nine red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That seems fine, especially because we do have the talisman as well. Yeah. All right. Do I have anything that searches? I'm just going to, because we do have um, fetch lands, I'm going to copy this guy. I don't like being in a position where I'm like, what's left in our deck? Yeah, Timeless Dragon will get a white source, but we're, I mean, usually just going to use it to get like Plateau, Sacred Found, or uh, Scrubland, or Survive Triome. So. Yeah, I mean, this seems fun. This is a fun little jaunt. And both of these are castable, especially with Seething Song, or like treasures from Fable, treasures from Magda. Decent removal with Path, Fatal Push, Reprieve, Touch, Skyclave Apparition, Vindicate, Fire Covenant, like Leyline Binding, like there's a lot of decent removal here. Also, Pest Infestation is a thing. Sideboard, we have Containment Priest. Could play Witherbloom Command. Destroy a non-creature, kill a creature. So we'll see. Oh, we get to play first. I'm loving it. This seems fine. Turn one Crypt, Mana for Pest Infestation. Not turn one Crypt, turn one's... We might just go Crypt into Skull Clamp, actually. But if we draw like Thraben Inspector, I want to be able to equip the Thraben Inspector. So and Reprieve. I do like that. Well, I like that we can't do anything anyway, so it's not like we're missing out by keeping up Reprieve. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Don't counter my fall. Of course they counter Fable. <laughs> uh, I mean, I knew it was going to happen, but I'm not going to not play it. We're not a control deck. Like, what are you going to do? Demonic Tutor. All right. That's the thing. Their mana base is greedier than our mana base. Oh, fascinating. I think we just do that. I 
I'm going to assume you don't have something that has haste here. Okay, that can get an Andoral and still keep up Reprieve, so that's not terrible. Concealing Curtains activate? Oh, no activate. Fascinating. Hmm. Well, I think we're just playing this tapped. Playing this. Hmm, interesting. I think we can actually just sit on this and if they attack with this guy, we block it. Like, is that worth, it's not worth taking two for them to like, for them to use that guy, I think. So, let's blood crypt. Uh, one, one. Stony. Right, the whole point is to protect the monarch. If we didn't have monarchy, I wouldn't care about this guy attacking. Yes. Get Andoral. Equip you. And then we'll just pass with Monarch and Reprieve up. Yep, so it feels like they're definitely setting something up here. Which means they can't do it this turn. <sighs> All right, so now we know their plan at least. They're going to Hull Breacher and then try to wheel, which is sad, but what can you do? We can play this and equip it. Is that better than just pest infestation? I don't know, that's pretty good. Skull Clamp is not as good when they have Hull Breacher. They're playing us the Hull Breacher this turn, which means they have two mana up. One, two, I'm tempted to just do this for four to make four bodies, but at that point, like, Endural just seems better. Like, just having Endural out attached to a body is pretty good. Plus they take seven here. Well, you gotta do your worst here, champ. Yeah, that's pretty good. They're at six. Yeah, I feel like this game's over actually, depending on what they get. I mean, we know what they're doing. They demonic tutored. Their plan is already laid out. SF Dragon, I think you mean hinder drawing, right? I think that's what you meant to say. And yes, I agree with you. I mean, some of them are fine. Like, I think... Fascinating. Yep, seems good. I mean, wheel is better than time spiral air for sure. J 
Sure. Great. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, Conceal Courier, Snapcaster, Force of Negation, Remand, Brazen Borrower, Lose Focus, Life Death. A lot of good. Wow, your deck looks good. Chose Chromox, Force, Snapcaster, Swamp, Life and Death. Force, Swamp, Snapcaster, Life Death. Sure. So life death, they can hit the astral dragon in their graveyard. Make copies of treachery. <laughs> Steal two more things. That seems good. Yeah. Bet they'll do that. Wow. You did it. Yep. Look at that. <laughs> oh, Lord. So <laughs> good times. Wow, wouldn't this have been good? What just happened? Oh, they're still putting the treacheries? What? Where are the treacheries? Puts treachery... Did they not... Did they not choose the... Where are they? Do they... Do they show up when this resolves? What happened to the treacheries? What am I missing here? Is something happening? Hmm. So you're at five. They do have Force of Negation for our Leyline Binding, which is very good. They also have Snapcaster to hit Bitter Triumph. So they really, they really just have like everything they need. Chrome Mox is gone. We know of these three, and that's pretty much all we need to know. And they also have a million treasures, so it's like, it's not even. If you target an aura with Astral Dragon's ability, no tokens will be created. Why? That's so, wow, that's so complex. What? Oh, they targeted through the breach accidentally? Well, couldn't they just block? What? What? You just block here. You still have Force of Negation and five more cards in hand. What did they mean to hit? Wheel of Fortune is above it. Life Death is below it. Do they mean to hit, like, Bitter Triumph? I'm very confused. They have Through the Breach. We're going to Containment Priest. Even though it, it does kind of restrict our Through the Breach a little bit, I'd rather have... I'd rather have it than not. I can, con I can control when I Through the Breach. I almost kind of like Robber of the Rich because their deck seems kind of slow and getting a 2-2 two -two Haster out seems good. Maybe for like Ophiomancer. Um, yeah, everything else seems good. That fourth year Lingus was great. There is, there is the Magda and a bunch of a bunch of white black mana.
Sure. I mean, you have to have to take Fable, like, right? Like, if I draw a red source, like, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yep, definitely leading with that guy. So now we can go Magda into Stoneforge, keeping up path. That seems good. You're gonna fire ice, really? Jesus, you got it, champ. All right, well then. That is a card. Having path up for Hall Breacher seems good. Okay, we've drawn all the cards for Stoneforge. That is unfortunate. All right, so let's just play Andoral and Clamp. We still have Path Up for Treasure Token. Oh, all right, great match. <laughs> all right, you know what? Sure, I'll take it. I'm not gonna look a gift win in the mouth here, but that's, uh, that was really something. Yeah, I did not. Their deck looks good. I'm, I'm really surprised that, like, I don't know why they scooped in game one and they didn't just play it out because I still feel like they were in an extremely commanding position. Very weird, man. Round two, fight. Well, our opponent went to six. Good starts all around. Tippy top. Hmm, conceal these. So we're going to say no. Okay, okay. That's concealed and stony. Stony Maroney. I mean, do we get Andoral or Skull Clamp here? <sighs> Andoral feels a little better with this hand. We don't we don't really have a clampable hand. You got it. Big tops. Check it and see. That's a good one. <laughs> I guess we just kill it. Hmm. That is interesting. It's not where we want to be right this second. So we got eight. Could go to seven, then six, then gain skull clamp as well. I don't love Vindicating a Triome when they have top because it just feels like they can get out of it fairly easily. Uh, I am tempted to Talisman Stoneforge. Yeah, 
that seems okay. Plusing Teferi doesn't seem like the best. Plus, now we have Pest Infestation, which goes quite well with Skull Clamp. All right. We'll see if this is the correct choice or if we're just going to get slaughtered. Okay, top during main phase is, is pretty good. Oh, activating top during main phase. Oh yeah, you got it. Take Andoral. Interesting. Hmm. So I'm pretty sure we just Fire Covenant this guy for one. And then Skull Clamp the Mystic and kill the Teferi. Two, three. Just making sure this wasn't creatures and planeswalkers, and I'm going to look real silly. This feels correct. Ravel this, you little bitch. They have five cards, we have four cards and and Andoral. Plus we have Stoneforge and Skull Clamp. Yeah, that guy's fine. Yeah, that's fine. We're gonna just kill this guy. So let's actually go one, two, three, Vindicato. I like that we tapped in such a way that if we had to recast it, uh, we would not have been able to, but. I mean, we could pest infestation this, but they're just gonna draw a card and that's worse. I think we just play Triome here. Uh, it gives us the, we have the green. Could also just play planes and cycle. I think we just play planes and cycle triome here. We don't actually need the green. That's a good sign. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. That also gives us uh, ample targets for our pest infestation. Prismatic ending on the clamp. Sure. <coughs> they have two cards. That seems fine. Oh yeah, if they're tapping out, this is great for us. Narset, let's draw in response. Seething Song. I mean, that's pretty good if we get to Pest Infestation. Unfortunately, they did exile our Skull Clamp. Oh, big Teferi. Okay, no, that's what we're doing. We're doing that instead. <laughs> uh, get Seething. I'm seething, bro. One, two, three. Six. This is 12. Yeah, that's not going to be enough to... Don't daze me, bro. Uh, attack Narset. Attack Narset. Attack Narset. Nope, just two of those. One, two, three at your face. 
So Narset, Narset, three at your face, and then keeping two back in case they Teferi bounce one or do something else. This is why I have Seething Song in my keep as well. I just think it's very good. Um, unlike Cabal Ritual, where it's like you pay two to get one most of the time, or Pyretic Ritual or Desperate Ritual. Like the Seething Song going from three to five is very good. And it's also, it's like the crucial amount for a lot of... Um, like strategies like going to three to five lets you cast sneak attack and activate it it lets you through the breach it lets you ramp into fourth ear lingus <laughs> like it does a lot of cool stuff okay so we know they have teferi wrath of god damn wow that's pretty good I don't know if it's good enough though. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're just gonna go pest on this. And we're gonna go one, two. Six one ones. And next turn we have Andoral. We're still drawing cards off of the the ring, the ringeth, the monarchy, the crown, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, they just have to play Teferi here. Yep, you got it. <sighs> so we can we can actually go one, two, three, four, five. Play this guy. This is nine damage. Yeah, we just have to kill Teferi here. Attack your face. All of these cards attack Teferi. And that way, if they have a way to deal with one, Teferi still goes to one. Whereas if they have a way to deal with this guy. Yep. Yep, see, that's why we did that. Because then they would get rid of this guy and Teferi would still be at four. But right now, Teferi going to one is pretty much fine. <laughs> um, Let's play Proving Ground. We're still drawing cards and they're still like dead on board right now. They need like another sweeper. And I think the speed at which they drew a card uh, is indicative of their desperation. Oh yeah, this is, it's happening. The desperation is real. And that'll do, pig. This deck has been pretty sweet. Um, Vampire Hexmage is decent. We saw Narset, Teferi, and Teferi. It's double black though, which is kind of rough. What does Portable Hole hit? It hits their mocks. That's kind of it. I think we're probably just fine like this. Well, this hand's pretty rough. We're definitely gonna mulligan this and definitely gonna keep this. Let's pitch. I kind of just like pitching planes here. Like we have two lands and a talisman. And run the draw, so I think like we'll probably be able to draw something. But now we have black, white, red, and green. So that's pretty good. We also saw very few counter spells from them. So they're gonna Teferi and bounce our signet. Oh no, that's that's fine. That's pretty good. Do we just fourth ear lingus? Like we become the monarch, they don't block, but then we're like, we, we can easily kill this guy. But then if they wipe the board with like dam, they can like become the monarch then wipe the board and then we're kind of in, in rough shape. I don't love that. 
And I kind of think it's just Ophiomancer here. I mean, it's either it's either one of these three, right? I am afraid of Dam. They're just using it as Wrath of God. I do think it's just Ophiomancer here. And then if we hit a land, we get to Andoral and, and, and Swing. Okay. Narseto. Mystic Confluence. That is a good one. That is quite the good one. What are you doing? Oh, man. If we had one more land here. So we can see Thing Song for five, and then this is six. The, the sad, like, if we, if we had white black, then we can literally kill this, leave them with no guys on board. Like, leaving them with stupid selfless spirit is dangerous because... I mean, we could also just fire Covenant the selfless spirit. Which feels fine against them. Like I really don't want to. I don't want a fourth year lingus while they have spirit because it just lets them crack back at the monarchy and then brat the board, and then we have they literally draw like three cards off of it. It just feels bad. But they didn't do anything, and they missed a land drop. Fascinating. Hmm. We could just seething song and play Andoral. Oh, I should have kept a white up so I can cast the Urban Inspector too. Uh, yeah, that's that was terrible. That's frustrating. Yeah, that was that was a, a, a catastrophic misplay. We could have either played the Urban Inspector or even fourth year Lingus for one would have just been backbreaking there. That was terrible. Yeah, now they're now they're back in the saddle again. <laughs> I mean, we can touch the Spirit Elven Thraven Inspector here. That's actually pretty good. Mm, Stoneforge getting Skull Clamp actually feels better. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. I should have attacked first because they might just block here. Yeah, that's, yeah, that seems fine though. I mean, it's still a great trade. Um, actually, you're the the higher value target. <sighs> Should have attacked first. Eh, actually, getting rid of the getting rid of the guy is not terrible. I don't know. That, I think that could go either way. There you go. Now you got Mystic Confluence Man online, but you have to do something, right? Like not just leave, you can't just leave Mystic Confluence up. Sure. Okay. Now we're talking. Give me a land. That's not a land at all. It's like not even close to a land. And done. We're going to go green. One, two... Now we're talking. 
Yeah, let's get Thraben out here. Oh yeah, now we're now we're cooking with gas. Oh, nice. Mystic Confluence still still offline. That okay, so we have both the big gentlemen in our hand now. Oh, we just win the match. Great. <laughs> I mean, we could Irlingus here for one. This costs four base, one, two, three, four. So we could actually do it for for two, which is for six damage. Plus we have Skull Clamp. Like, yeah, we had it all. <coughs> okay, two o four o. Seems good. All right. This actually seems great. Turn two talisman into fourth ear lingus off of. Oh man, let's hope we can. Let's hope we can finagle a a victory here. Also through the breach if we hit a fat monster. Hmm. Boy, oh boy. All right, fingers crossed this actually, uh... I'm getting the vapors. Okay, scrubbles. scrubble a bubble a dub a We can also, we can't play Magda, so we actually do need the red source here. So it was either between this or Magda, but only one of them we can cast. So it's important to play the card you can cast. Oh, if they tap out here. Fuck, come on, dude. We gotta be a little biscuit. I mean, whatever. Return delayed, not a huge deal. Draw your card. Yeah. Everybody loves everybody loves people that draw their cards. We just block here. Beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. Archon of cruelty. Mountain. Mountain. All right, so five, six, we can do this for four. I don't think they're wrathing, so I'm actually gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna slam it here. I mean, they're gonna get the monarchy for a turn, but that's fine, they're taking eight. So, <clears throat> what are you going to do? Are they going to Wrath? No. Mm, that's actually okay. Stone Forge. Two, four, six, eight. Oh man, we're so close to just killing them, which is kind of funny. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think we just play Stoneforge and equip Skull Clamp to it. Thank you. Oh, Odysseus, thank you for the resub, buddy. Really appreciate you, my dude. Whoop, whoop. 
and attach. All right, this is the turn. I'll see if we're dead. Touch the spirit realm is interesting. This game is definitely close, and Othari definitely made it closer than I wanted it to be. Oh, that's not good. Hero blade hold. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. It's unfucking real, dude. Uh, lightning Greaves plus here on the exact turn you needed that. Yeah, all right. What can you do? It took shockingly long to turn these guys sideways. Yep. Great. <sighs> that's, an, that's super annoying. I mean, what do we see? Othari, Staff of the Storyteller, Lauren. Yeah, I mean, Fire Covenant would have been great. Sure, this hand actually seems fine. We can go get a red with Timeless. I mean, they had they had to have Lauren for a Talisman on turn two, and then they had to have literally Othari into Lightning Greaves, Hero of Blade Hold of all the of all the fucking cards in the cube. Like, whatever. <laughs> it's, I don't know. That's kind of kind of frustrating. I mean, this deck has done very well otherwise, though, so. <clears throat> yeah, that's, I mean, it was our first loss. That's true. Huh, that's a card, all right. Um, I kind of think we just Timeless Dragon here. Yeah, let's Timeless Dragon go grab, like, um, we'll grab Zator Zeotora's Proving Ground, probably. Thalia, sure. Actually, you know, we can get, we can go get Stomping Ground so it comes into play untapped and we can still, um, oh, that's not a Plains. Neither is Zeotaurus Proving Ground. I just made up a bunch of cards. Um, we can get Plateau, actually. Plateau is fantastic here. It does what we want it to do. Get in there, little three B baby. Three B baby. I mean this this guy next turn into Andoral is pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. Seething song. Maybe we could Andoral this turn. No attacks here. If we attack, they just trade their 2-2 for our 2-2, and then they get another 2-2, so it's really doesn't do anything. Okay. Seems fine. <sighs> Proving ground, eh? Or triome, rather. <laughs> uh, is it just Andoral here? Sure feels like it. Eh, 
that. That feels okay. I mean, I think they go land Othari, draw a card. That seems good. But we have Fire Covenant to follow up, so I'm not terribly upset by that. Fire Covenant's a, a pretty insane card. Also, I do like this Secret Layer version. What is this they're doing? Sure. Is it First Strike or... Yeah, that's... Wow, that's pretty good. Yep. That is nice. And now they can kill our dragon too. Wow, that was really good. Yep, that's probably the, the absolute best thing they could have done. So that makes sense that they were able to do that. Yep. Yep, exactly. <laughs> How do you write it up any better than this? I can just predict everything they're going to do. It's fantastic. Wouldn't it be cool if I predicted the things they were going to do and then they didn't actually do them? That would be wild. Uh, no, this is a secret layer. Fire Covenant was never legal and standard. It was not the... There was a secret layer that also had these borders. It had Fire Covenant, Fractured Identity, All is Dust, and like two others, I think. So this is five, six, seven, three, four, five. The problem is we need double red. No, we don't. Two, three, uh, three, four, five, two. I'm just taking eight here and I'm not even caring. Uh, let's attack Emperor. Let's attack your face. And I'm keeping one guy back because they're playing a red white deck, so. All right, that feels okay. Fire Covenant is busted. I think it was, oh, here it is. So I can get a good image of it. Yeah, so Fractured Identity, Fracturing Gust, Artifact Mutation, Drown in the Lock, Fire Covenant, and All is Dust. And I picked up like five of those guys. Hero of Bladehold, huh? Well, that's pretty good. Ophiomancer is not terrible, I guess. So they're going to have four creatures attacking. Definitely don't want to take two from, from Blood Crypt here, but I will play the Blood Crypt. Four, five, six, seven. This is four, five. That seems fine. I'm not. I'm not willing to risk like two more flyers there. So we have five blockers, which is good. Unfortunately, only one of their creatures can get through. So they have to have two removal spells in their three cards. Spookules. <laughs> yeah, it's a Thalia. Four mana. Parallax wave? I mean, that would be a slam dunk, and I don't know why you'd slow roll that. <sighs> B 
Big thinkies is right. <laughs> oh, Lord. Frankel P. Orr is actually pretty funny. I don't think I've ever heard that. I've heard Frankel Poor, but never Frankel P. Orr. This is fine. I don't think this kills us, which is good. One, two, three, four. They're going to bounce the snake token, I think, for sure. Which is actually terrible. Yeah, that's... That is a thing that you did. And now we only have to block three... What's the best way to kill them? Like, we can block with these three, and then they take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my god, we're one shy of killing them. That's nuts. What if we kill the Blade Splicer, or Blade, Bladey Lady, with these guys, like this, and then we take two... And they get a 2-2 two -two back, but then they're mostly decapitated. Oh, we just win. Okay, great. <laughs> good blocks are good. Oh, wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We could have just cast this guy next turn. Yeah, that would have been that would have been nutso. In Le Butso. I keep looking at Hexmage, but I keep thinking it's not going to be... God, Uthari's a real shitbird, literally. Card is uh, quite a good... Okay, no red again, but we do have a Magda, or not a Magda, but a, a Thraben Inspector, several pieces of removal. All right, this is for all the marbles, all the marbulays. We could get a Blood Crypt next turn. And then just cast Magda. It doesn't give us green, which is kind of rough. Sure. Oh, restless bivouac. We cannot deal with this this turn. I guess we can cast Magda. Oh, we can get stomping ground here because now we have bivouac. That's actually pretty good. Let's play in such a way that like lets us deal with a with a pest infestation if we draw it. Especially when they have a Glimmer Lens in play, which is uh, what's known as a target. I'm pretty sure we just block here. No, we don't block here. We take two. Lauren, killing Clue. Flicker Wisp, flickering Glimmer Lens. That's really good. Yep, that is a thing, all right. Hmm. Could play Stoneforge and blink one of the tokens. I actually don't hate that. No, we can't. We, I, I, I thought this was a treasure for a second. We cannot do that. Hmm. That is frustrating. This is also non-token, so we can't actually get rid of the tokens. We can get rid of Flicker Wisp. Then they still draw a card. Well, we might as well get the land. Yeah, we can get rid of the lens, but it's not like living weapon where like the creature dies if you do that. Yeah, this actually feels kind of prohibitive, unfortunately. Yeah, what I'm thinking is they go to combat and we blink the token that has the that feels pretty good, actually. Uh... God, Andoral's really good. I think... Uh... I don't feel like our hand is skull clampy enough. I'd rather take the card that, like, gives us bodies.
Really? That's like a very easy trade for us. If this is Hero Blade Hold, we're just instantly Skyclave apparitioning it. Snap. Snap Skyclave. Uh, one, two, three. Let's play Triome. Make another treasure, and now next turn we're in a good position to Andoral. This feels okay. Still have a clue. And being able to deal with Hero Blade Hold the Skyclave Apparition. Chef's Kiss. Yep. Bounce the Skyclave. Fascinating. I mean, that's fine. Because we just get to. We just get to Andoral and equip and make two attackers to kill Teferi. Oh, and we get to keep up Path, too? Good grief. Attack your face. Okay. I mean, okay. One at Teferi. One at you. Oh, mamma mia, mamma mia. Oh, mamma mia, let me go. I mean, having a legendary creature to make these guys <laughs> attacking when they come into play is pretty epic. Four, five, six, they have eight damage on board. Oh, they're windmill slamming Othari here. <laughs> Well, we're not going to let you attack with him because then you get a token, so I'll just kill it now. <laughs> Enjoy your land. And now we have Apparition to deal with a blocker. We have a clue on board still. Really? So we can just get rid of this and you lose? They can't. They can't do this. Oh, they just killed themselves. Wow, did we just 3-0 this draft? Did they play a land this turn? Uh, five, six, seven. I don't think it's worth not blocking here. One, two, we're gonna have four in the air. If they have a blocker, this is only, it doesn't kill them anyway, so. Wow, Super Fritz. <laughs> Lyrically, that is brilliant. Are they conceding? Like, what's going on? My my thing is broken. All right, hold on. Let me, let me get out of here and see if that fixes it. Okay, well, we just restarted, and I think I I think the game died. I have not seen this. Oh, boy. Well, that's a thing. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll consider it a win, right? Like, we were going to attack them with five, six, seven, eight, nine, get rid of their one blocker. They would have died. They were at, like, eight. But this is very strange. It's not my internet, right? No? Everybody's alive. All right, well, 
Well, so here's round three for that draft we were in. Uh, if you look here, it was 2-0-2-0, and then this was nullified, and I did not get the win for the last round. So now we're playing this deck again for the final round. But it's pretty good, so I don't really mind. Um, I'll keep this hand. We have like 11 white sources in the deck, so I'm not really super upset about not having a white source here. 11 is literally one in three cards, so... That's pretty decent. What up, Cyborg? Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Guess you got me. And now I've drawn both targets for Stoneforge, which is why I... It's my, like, my pet peeve of playing Stoneforge Mystic. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> so just really glad they reimbursed me, because this is not going well. Waylander, thank you for the resub. Really appreciate it, my dude. That's fine. Oh, well, that's that's okay. That'll get us somewhere. If we hit a land next turn, we can go Talisman into Fatal Push on something. Yep. Elf in the Yard. Sounds good. Get strip mine back. Great. Having a good time. Outland Liberator. Sure. Fire Covenant. I guess that yeah, I was like we're we're just gonna eventually draw Stoneforge Mystic here because we have uh so next turn they can literally go strip mine and then kill our talisman. Yeah, this game's over. Like we're just not drawing lands and strip mine on turn one is pretty good. Yeah. Let's bring in portable hole, because that's pretty good against most of the creatures we just saw. Uh take out Probably Reprieve. It's a little slow against them when they're playing like a bunch of one, one and two mana cards. Sure. We'll keep this. I mean, I'm still going to lead with Bivouac here because we can still play Fable off of this. If they have Strip Mine, it's fine. Okay. <clears throat> well, we don't have a Black Source. So let's go clamp into Stomperino. Green Sun for Ignoble Hierarch. Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be juicy if we ever get the land for it. <clears throat> but playing Fable here is pretty good. Also, being able to discard two cards next turn is pretty nice. That's a guy. Don't they always have a fetch after they play a tireless tracker? <laughs> that's, <clears throat> that's just how it goes, right? Equip that skull clamp. There you go. Hmm. 
Don't know if I hate that. We don't have any black sources, so we do kind of need a black source. I guess I guess this guy makes a black source. Oh, and sacking the treasure also triggers fatal push. Huh. Well, we're going to say yes. We're going to ship path and planes here. That's interesting. Well, this is actually pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. <clears throat> and now we have double pest tokens to skull clamp. And that was actually perfect. Pest infestation on the on the skull clamp into being able to sack the treasure to revolt is pretty nice. Yeah, now I feel like we're pretty far ahead. Also, this is a card that was spoiled today, which was pretty sweet. I think it was spoiled today. Um, Flying Lifelink Ward 2 for a 4-mana four 4-2 four flyer. And then it has Disguise, which is like an upgraded version of Morph. When you disguise a creature, cost 3, it's still a 2-2, two -two, but it has Ward 2 as well. Which is pretty sweet, because uh, Morph creatures are pretty uh, fragile. When it's turned face up, exile X target creatures from the battlefield and or creature cards from the graveyard. Uh, when it leaves the battlefield, return the exiled cards to their owner's hand. So it's basically Angel of Serenity, but on a much cheaper, more versatile body, which is pretty sweet. And then they just pest infestation to our skull clamp. So clearly a mirror match. Well, that guy's, that guy's big. Very tempted to fire Covenant, these three. We still have two more removal spells. <clears throat> I think we're doing that. Next turn, we can make two treasure tokens. It's not bad. I mean, I yeah, the only reason we did that was because we have we still have two more removal spells in hand, so. <clears throat> Are they just going to kill our reflection? No, they're just going to play a bunch of nerds. Okay. That's interesting. Does that do anything? This gives us five, this gives us six. I think this lets us Archon next turn if we make a copy of this guy. Oh, they're just blocking. Wow. That's fine. We could, what if we blink this? What happens then? Do we get another token? <clears throat> that seems pretty good. I think we do that at instant speed, right? Like, it just, it flips, right? It goes back to Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's do that. And if we hit any land, we get to, uh... <clears throat> oh, we actually, if we don't, we don't need a land if we do this end of turn, because then we just get to play Archon off of the three treasures after attacking. 
They have two cards. I have to assume a clue token is getting cracked here. No? Kogla. Oh, they're going to fight our... our Jeekums. This actually feels great, because now we can Vindicate. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'll discard Magda here. Not getting rid of Seething Song or any of these. We're just going to cast Archon here. Oh, Skyclave. That's good. Well, isn't that something? So, yeah, we just don't want these two to fight. Like, this is just an obvious one, two, three. Vindicate your big ape. One, two, three. Make another treasure. And now again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. So we're one away from Archon. We either have to attack with this guy or just draw land. Which I feel like we're due for. It's, we've only put one land in the graveyard and we've drawn four in seven turns, so. That's good, but it doesn't really affect us right now. Crack that clue. Yep. Oh, look, it was not a land. <sighs> Yeah, so I think we're just skipping another turn, getting rid of the Omnath because it's a scary card. And just attacking for four again. Boy, we're just getting rid of all their threats, which is nice, but that's kind of like what our deck wants to do, so. We might just get to a point where we never get to cast Archon, so. Four mana. Urtai? Nope. Mind twist. That's a bummer. Yep. <sighs> Great. <laughs> it's like the literal turn before we're going to do it. Yep. Sure. Our board is still very good. Planes. I mean, they're at seven. They take, what, five here, six here? One, two, three, four, five, six. They go to one. Yep. Strip Mind, Mind Twist, and Pest Infestation. It's very good against us. Like, look at all the things that their Pest Infestation kills. Like, all seven of these. Yeah, that's a bummer. They do have Green Sun Zenith. I wonder if Containment Priest is good here. It could also just sneak in a block, too. It's also good if they try to get back, if they try to Pest Infestation, Spirit Realm, or Portable Hole, or a Leyline, like the creature just doesn't come back. Right, it's a Nambo with Breach, but I mean, like, that's fine. Like, I'd rather be in control of that interaction. What up, Super Fritz? It is 22 degrees and sunny today. Last night, it was negative 18. So, I will take the 44 degree change. 
which is kind of insane. Yeah, double digits is nice. Well, we hit double digits yesterday, too. It was neg <laughs> just negative double digits. Man, they have yet to mulligan. Ooh, no guy. All right. This hand is actually very good against strip mine, so I'm okay with it. That's totally fine. However, if they go strip mine into um, into Wayfinder, it's not going to be good. Which is probably what they're going to do, right? Okay, they didn't do that. That's good. That's good. Puts it back into play tapped, right? Yeah, that's fine. Combat damage, surveil one, and return. Like, do I care about that? Do I care about them getting a tap to Bloodstain Mire back? No, I'd rather just double block with Fable next turn. This is my game from last night that ended, yeah. We just have to replay it, unfortunately. Solid. Okay. I mean, I guess we just have to fable here. Yeah, I feel like we're far behind here, unfortunately. Do I just want them to keep getting back <laughs> Bloodstained Mire? I guess it's fine. I don't know. It comes back tapped. That's something, right? I mean, we're going to get treasure potentially also find discarding a couple lands here crucible in the yard pest infestation mind twist for four well we kept the aerolingus
Fascinating. I don't think I want to pitch anything here. Actually, let's pitch Skull Clamp. Oh. Well, that's something, isn't it? Well, we kept the best one, I guess. We're definitely keeping two back. We're going to double block. If they want to kill our guys, that's fine. But keeping the monarchy is pretty important here. Now we have a green for pest infestation. And I kind of wish we kept Skull Clamp if I knew we were drawing pest infestation. But that's not the way it goes. They have three cards, which isn't the best. They have two cards, which isn't the best. If they play Kogla, it's pretty strong, though. Oh, no attacks. Nice. That's what Father likes. Oh, Leyline Binding. I like a Leyline Binding as well. So this costs four? Hmm. Not the best. And I kind of feel like we just hold here. <coughs> they can get strip mine. I'm not sure if we really care about that. We could pest infestation for four, but no targets. But they have some decent targets. Yeah, I think we can just pass here. I mean, the alternative is casting Leyline Binding for four on this and then just attacking with two two Shamans. Which doesn't feel terrible, but if they draw something big like a Koglo, like it's... I'd rather have a Leyline Binding. Yeah, I think we're just passing here. Oh, that's interesting. Well, right now their only way to abuse it is this guy, so they're going to get like one strip mine slash wasteland activation, it looks like. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, they also would have drawn that guy and then completely blown us out with Leyline. <laughs> so that's funny. Is there anything we want to do? No, not really. Vindicate. Hmm. I don't hate that. I know this guy is a 3-4 if they just block. They block and then they sack a land. So that's not great. Actually, I was thinking, like, let's attack. But then, like, I realized this guy's a 3-4, so it just chumps and then we don't get anything. Um, yeah. So... But they still need ways to get their lands back into play. Yep, figured you'd do that. Oh, that's pretty good. Wow. I kind of want to do that now. <laughs> Yep. 
I mean, this also shuts off their cradle, so. Yep, figured you'd do that. That's fine. So now we're definitely getting in there. Trium actually makes this cost four, so we can use it at instant speed again without using the treasure token. We draw another card. Great. So this actually feels really good. Uh, they're going to have to play multiple threats here because we have Leyline Binding, so... You got it. I feel like if they had a threat last turn, they would have played it. So this is probably their last card that they have to do anything with. Two lands left in the deck? Jeez. That's no good. Oh, did we get it? Did we get the did we get the the 60 oh, 61 561? Yeah. Anyway, that was a satisfying outcome. So, we basically won four rounds in this draft with this deck. So, yeah. All right. Glad I could finish this one off with a with a record and a, a victory, a record. Every 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 draft has a record. Thanks for watching.